Hey there, Ed Holbein here, coming to you from beautiful but cold Nashville, Tennessee. I hope that you are well wherever in the world you're joining from. Uh, so first of all, let me just say thank you to everyone who attended the uh, live version of this woman, webinar last Thursday, the 20th of January. I hope that uh, it was useful. I hoped it um, offered some insights into how you might go about implementing the changes coming down the pike to the way that Blackbaud's Razor's Edge and uh, Microsoft Office application integrations uh, speak to one another. So how those two huge systems, Razor's Edge, Microsoft Office apps, how they talk to one another two huge systems, right? Uh, the way that they talk to each other is changing. So what I wanted to do is, is, is offer you a, a, a recap of the live webinar, kind of focus the material a little bit more and um, really look a little bit more closely at uh, some of what you will see in the system after those changes go into effect, what you'll see in Razor's Edge. So that's what I want to do today. So a couple of things before I get into the meat of the recap. So I've included chapters. Uh, that's what YouTube calls them, chapters. They're called timestamps. Other people call them timestamps on this video. So you can kind of skip around to the changes that you feel are going to impact you the most. So those will be in the description. So if you click on uh, the, the time marker in those, in those chapters that I've included in the descriptions, in the description to the video, uh, you'll be able to jump right to that section. So skip around as you will and focus on what specifically pertains to you and your organization. I'm also including uh, in the description to this video, a link to a shared folder. Now, I mentioned this during the live version of this webinar. Um, in the shared folder, you'll find the slide deck. You'll find a um, checklist for the 10-point plan I'm going to talk about shortly um, that you can download and use as you see fit. They'll, right now, there's also uh, kind of a guide to simple mail merges in Microsoft Word. So I'm going to be adding to those resources as the date of the change approaches. So keep coming back to that folder, download at will, pass them off as your own. Part of my job as a nonprofit consultant is um, making you look like a rock star, a country star, any kind of star you want to be. That's what I want to help uh, make you. So use those and pass them off as your own. Take them to uh, your boss, take them to leadership, take those to folks who are helping you make decisions about, this about these changes at your organization and how to implement them and pass them off as your own. I don't mind at all. So download those. One note about the slide deck, it's a PDF in that shared documents folder. So um, you will need to download that specifically in order to access the links, okay? Because there's live links to resources and other goodies uh, within that slide deck. So to use those links, uh, you'll have to download that uh, PDF of the slide deck um, to access those links and just to click through uh, really easily. So with that, I want to go ahead and share my screen. When, when this live webinar happened last Thursday, um, it really was an informal discussion. There were some great folks there, some of my favorite folks on the face of the planet. It was so nice to have them all in one place, all together. I usually see them, of course, all separate. But it was so nice to see all those good folks together. So it was, it was an informal conversation just to really talk about the changes um, and how organizations 
folks that I have worked with in the past and am working with currently, how they might go about handling these changes. Because we all know that change is not fun uh, in any way, shape, or form. Um, change can lead to anxiety, it can lead to stress, it can even lead to fear, especially when the changes involved workflows that you've been using for a long time that you're used to, and who knows, maybe even you like them a little bit, right? So I get it, change is difficult, but here's the thing. Anxiety, stress, and fear, the level of those all come down when we actively manage change. So with this recap, that's what I wanna to continue to help you do manage that change. Because let's face it, change is the only constant in our lives. So the better we manage it in work and outside of work in our lives, home lives, the better we will be in all areas of our lives. So that's what I hope this recap helps you do. Manage that change a little better, a little more, so that you maybe, fingers crossed, avoid that anxiety, stress, and fear altogether. So with that, let's take a look at what we are going to be looking at today. So first, a good place to start is with the changes. So we're gonna cover the changes that are going to be taking place. Uh, then I'll present what I'm calling my 10 point plan. And what this is, is just, 10 steps that you can follow that will have you well on your way to implementing whatever changes you choose to implement um, on a, in a timely fashion. So again, that will be in the uh, shared documents folder. So be sure to download that, mark it up, edit it, edit it, add to it, take away from it, whatever you need to do. Um, but that's the 10 point plan that we'll be covering here in the recap. Later on, we'll also cover, uh, look at some resources that I think have been particularly helpful uh, through um, this change and through since the announcement uh, from Blackbaud back in December. And then we'll I'll, um, dive into some questions that were asked during the live webinar, um, during the Q&A portion of the live webinar. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so let's jump right in and go to the changes. So who is going to be impacted by these changes to the way that Blackbaud's Razor's Edge and Microsoft Office application integrations talk to one another? So who is going to be impacted? Essentially, that's hosted customers of Blackbaud. So if you let's call it log in remotely to your Razor's Edge database, meaning you don't host your data on a server at your organization. You, you use Citrix to log into your database that's hosted off-premise um, for the East Coast of the United States anyway, that's up in Boston. And for the West Coast of the United States, that's up in Vancouver. So if you log into either one of those locations, you will be impacted by these changes. So for hosted customers, that's who this will impact. So if you're not a hosted customer, meaning, meaning you're locally hosted um, on your servers at your organization, you will not be impacted by any of these changes. Um, we did have some folks on the live webinar that were not hosted by BlackBot, so they hosted their own data, um, but they were folks who were maybe considering moving to hosting and they wanted an idea of kind of what to expect, get a little insight on these changes. WebView or RENXT, um, WebView is not going to be impacted. So none of the functionality that you may be using or your fundraisers may be using um, in WebView, RENXT, nothing will be impacted there. All of that, all of those new goodies that have been built into 
uh, RENXT and continue to be built in uh, RENXT, not impacted. So really we're talking about hosted customers here. So what are the changes? We'll see changes in Microsoft Office, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Outlook, Windows Paint and Windows Notepad. So if you're using Office, Excel, Outlook, Paint, and Notepad, these changes will impact you as they work inside of Razor's Edge, okay? Why? Now, the next slide uh, we'll take a really quick look at uh, is BlackBot's official statement on these changes, and I wanna highlight one thing there. But essentially, it boils down to security. So go back to the who of who is being impacted by these changes and its hosted customers. And you hosted folks are logging in, like I said, to a remote location where your data is hosted, lives on a server among a bunch of servers away from your location. So you're using Citrix to log in. Now think about just the very nature of of how that would work, right? So for every organization, they have their own little spot on the server that they're logging into. Each time they call up, call up a Microsoft Office function or Excel, Outlook, Paint, Notepad, that think of that as like another door or a window into that server. So each organization that's hosted by Blackboard is a house, right? and as many different ways into that house, the less secure it is. So BlackBot took this action to make sure they can secure your data and protect your donors and constituents the best way possible. So the why is security. So when, that's the big question. These changes will take effect after February 28th, 2022. So we have a little bit over a month to handle these changes, manage these changes, implement any new workflows that we need to implement. So February 28th, 2022, just a little over a month. The where and the how. Okay, so that's really the, the meat of the meat, the muscle of today's uh, recap. Uh, so, where will you feel these changes the most? And how will you manage these changes? So let's jump into the where you will feel these changes the most right after we look at that official uh, statement on these changes from Blackbaud. And I wanna highlight just the second paragraph here. So Blackbaud to uphold their responsibility to you and to those you serve they're making these necessary changes to how users access Microsoft Office application integrations. Say that fast 25 times or more, as I've been saying the past few weeks uh, from within Blackboard Solutions. So that's the official statement. If you are interested uh, in the official statement from Blackboard. Now in the resources slide, which you'll be able to link through through the PDF version of the slide deck, in the shared documents folder, um, you'll have access to some resources with, with many more details than I'll cover in this uh, recap today. So where will you feel these changes the most? So for the good folks that I work with, I know from working with them in the past and for the folks I'm working with currently, the biggest pain point is going to be changes in your Microsoft Word workflows. And here are all the changes that were happen that where Microsoft Word integrates with Razor's Edge. So we're gonna kind of go through those a little bit more closely. But for most of you who are my clients, um, who I've worked with in the past or am working with currently, this I feel is where you're gonna feel um, most of the pain caused by this change, if it's even pain. And you'll see why I say that shortly. So specifically, 
um, donor acknowledgement letters. So if you're running donor acknowledgement letters through our email, and then you are um, merging Razor's Edge data with Word inside of Razor's Edge, and then printing out those letters or downloading those to a local file or your network uh, folder, um, your workflow will change, okay? We'll talk about the how and what you might wanna do later, but that's where I feel, my very humble opinion, uh, you're gonna feel most of the pain uh, around these changes. Let me run through these bullet points first, and then we're gonna take a closer look at some uh, screenshots here so I can explain a little bit more in detail. So in terms of Microsoft Word, mail merge, RE mail merge, donor acknowledgement letters. Now, it, these changes will apply to other types of mail in Razor's Edge, but for the, for the good majority of you, this is where, um, this is the part of mail that you use the most, the part of RE mail that you use the most. Um, but it, th these changes apply to any type of mail in our email that use a Microsoft Word integration. Um, E-receipts will also be impacted. So if you are using a receipt file and you have it set up to send e-receipts, email e-receipts, um, that process will need to change. Mail merges from, mail merges from uh, the export module. So what you do with a Razor's Edge mail file, for example, in donor acknowledgement letters, you can also produce those same letters directly from the export module. So you might not have known that, but you can do that. You can set up a Word um, file or, or a Word document right with an export and then export that document right through uh, the export module, but not after February 28th. Uh, letters and configuration. So if you've worked with me, you know that I always explain when you're adding new letters to the system or setting them up for the first time, there are two places that you need to uh, look or work in. The first stop is in configuration because that's where you add the letter so that you can see that letter code on gift records or in batch as a column when you're entering gifts, either directly on a constituent record or via batch. Okay, so letters and configuration will change. We'll take a look at that a bit more close up in, in a few minutes. Media, so any Word files you have stored on the media tab, um, any media tab, um, you won't be able to open up via Word um, and you won't be able to edit them right within Razor's Edge. Also, if you're using Q, very handy tool, if those are set up as mail merges in Q, okay? So for those of you who don't know what Q is, uh, Q is a tool that you can configure to uh, run different functions for you. Let's say there's a huge export that you need to run every day and, and you set up a queue to run that at night, overnight, so that it's not um, taking up resources during the day. So if, if you have any mail merges set up in queue, those will not work anymore. You'll have to uh, kind of uh, work out another workflow for those queue mail merges. You won't be able to produce letters from a record, okay? So this is a constituent record, gift record, and action record where you can click the word icon and produce, let's say, produce that acknowledgement letter again or uh, add a letter to an action record or produce a le uh, letter created in Word directly from the constituent record. So those won't work anymore. Those are impacted by these changes. Also, when you're saving a document as an action in action records, uh, that functionality will go away, cease to work. And then this was new to me. I didn't know you could spell check in record notes, but you could, but not after February 28th. 
So let's take a closer look at some of what we just talked about. And the first thing I want to take a look at is um, kind of a, a closer look at donor acknowledgement letters. So these are, this is a, just a screenshot of an unfinished uh, donor acknowledgement letter from Ari Mail. What you're specifically not going to see after February 28th is the send to word merge wizard button up here at the top of this mail file. You also will not see merge anymore. So here we are in a larger view of a donor acknowledgement letter. This was produced in our email, donor acknowledgement letters, and then I just created a new file to get this screenshot. So after February 28th, what you will not see anymore is the send to word merge wizard button at the top, which is where you go to get to uh, your letters essentially. So it'll walk you through the steps to create a letter or add a new letter, uh, whether that's a simple mail merge or a conditional mail merge. So the nature, this button eventually is going to go away altogether. Probably what will happen um, after February 28th is you may still see it, but if you click it to use it, uh, you won't, it, you'll, it'll trigger an error message essentially. So the send to word merge wizard button is going away. And also down towards the bottom right-hand corner of an RE mail file, again, whether it's a donor acknowledgement, uh, uh, donor acknowledgement letters or any other mail type in RE mail, this merge button, that will go away as well. Again, it might be there after February 28th, but if you use it, it will trigger an error message. Let's close that screenshot up. Okay, next, letters and configuration. So I talked about this a little bit when we were going through the bullet points, um, but this is a closer look at that. So in configuration, in the razor's edge menu bar off to the left, um, if you go down to letters, uh, this is where your letters are stored. Now, just a moment ago, I described it as adding the letter to the letter code field, this is where you do that. Now, adding a letter to the letter code field, that process is not changing. You're still gonna to need to go here to actually get that letter description as it's reading here on the screen. To get that into your letter code table, you'll still need to do this. What's not gonna work is if you have a word merge set up in export from configuration, that exported word merge will not work. So if you've built a letter out in your in configuration and you've built that export out here with that, you know, see where that little pink um, line is, that's the export button and it will open up an export and you can create a word document right within that export. That won't work anymore. So if you'll do if, if you do that, You'll have to make other arrangements. You'll definitely have to, if you use that letter often, you'll need to get that letter out of the system and save it. So four other Microsoft Word screenshots I wanna take a look at or integration screenshots I wanna take a look at. And we'll just kind of cover them in order here. So I mentioned back in the, the bullet, points of changes for Microsoft Word integrations that you could produce a letter directly from a constituent record. This is where you do that. So if you have anything set up in constituent records, constituent letters um, in configuration, and you're using that to produce a letter of one sort or another directly from a constituent record, you won't be able to do that anymore, okay? Um, so you'll need to make other arrangements, develop other workflows to handle that process. But let me go back here. Let me go back one slide and show you in configuration, uh, you can set up, if you see kind of where my mouse is circling uh, next to this new letter uh, box here. These are the different letter types that you can build in configuration, gift, action, membership, constituent, event, and appeal. 
So that screenshot we just looked at of a constituent record, those are created under constituent, right? Makes sense uh, in configuration and letters. So just as an FYI, that's where those are. So you won't be able to produce those beautiful, lovely Microsoft Word documents merged directly from a constituent record. E-receipts. E-receipts are also in our email under receipts. And to send e-receipts as opposed to printing out the receipts and sending them via USPS, you can change the receipt type to a pre-formatted form to a custom data file. At that point, this tab number 10 will appear on the receipt parameter file. And then you can configure which email you want to send to, or you could, <laughs> and after February 28th, you won't be able to do that. Again, the same with send a word merge wizard, that will go away. And the merge button down here in the lower right-hand corner of the parameter file will also go away. Now, if you're printing out pre-formatted receipts on pre-formatted forms, you can still use these receipts, right? Because you're going to print them out. Um, but you won't be able to send e-receipts. So uh, I'm going to mention this again later, but you know, I feel a viable option to take the place of e-receipts through database view. Uh, is the gift receiving functionality in RENXT in WebView uh, works like a charm. You can customize the emails. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say probably a little bit more than you can customize them here. Um, in the whole process feels a little bit more contemporary, a little more modern, a little bit more of what you would expect uh, from a database in 2022. Um, so, so if you're using a, a receipt file to send e-receipts through database view, there's a corresponding functionality if you have Razor's Edge NXT in gift receipting. So that is certainly a viable option. Uh, that'll probably come up uh, again a little bit later. So let's drop down to the bottom here. And this is where if you were adding a letter to an action, I mentioned that earlier, uh, now, by default, when you create a new action in database view, it will default to phone call, which is the category here up towards the top. When you click over to mailing and create a category or create an action that's category of mailing, that's when this letter field will activate and this pesky little word icon here, that's the piece that's going away. You can still use actions in the way that you've always used them, except uh, creating a letter and adding that to the action and saving it. So that will go away. And last but certainly not least, I know some of you watching this have your home pages. This screenshot is of uh, the home page, my home page in um, uh, Razor's Edge database view. If you have uh, your daily acknowledgement, donor acknowledgement letter file set up on your homepage for easy access, and you have it set up to uh, merge the letters. So if I had, you can see I have um, this mail file here set up. This is set up as a merge, uh, word merge. So the merge will start as soon as I click this. Those won't work anymore. So if you're using your home page, continue to do so because it's super convenient. <laughs> but just know if you have a merge function set up as one of your favorites, i.e. from your from our email, your daily donor acknowledgement letters, that will cease to work. The only change you need to make is to customize your home page, this button at the top and then go into that function and change it to export rather than mail merge. Other things on this particular homepage, write a constituent letter. You see that over here to the right. That won't work anymore either if you are using that. 
Okay, so in terms of where I feel most of the good folks I've worked with in the past and currently, th these changes that I went through and, and kind of took a closer look at, those are the places where you're going to feel those changes the most, okay? So if you focus your energy there and create some alternatives, who knows, maybe based on that 10-point plan we're going to talk about shortly, um, and you start doing that today or very soon, you'll be way ahead of the curve in terms of um, managing these changes. Okay, so we're also gonna see some changes in the integration between um, Microsoft Excel and Razor's Edge. Something to note, I, I think many of you will be far less impacted by this change uh, than the changes happening in Microsoft Word. Um, but something to note here, you will still be able to export any data from Razor's Edge that you need to or want to, okay? So the ability to export is not going away, but how, depending on where in the system you're exporting, how that's exported, that may change or that will change, okay? So if we are exporting to Excel, and the best example I can give here is if you've been working on a query and there are two export options, right? If you, I don't have a screenshot of a query here, but if you're in the icon row or the, tool, uh, or the toolbar up at the top and you wanna export, open in Excel, that won't be an option anymore because that is Excel working inside Razor's Edge through a query. And so that integration is going away. Having said that, you can still export the results of that query to Excel or to uh, a CSV file. You'll still be able to do all those export functions. Excel just won't open with inside Razor's Edge. This also goes for reports. I know some of you out there like to export the, the results of uh, or the results of a report. You like to export those into uh, Excel uh, using the export button in the top left corner of a standard report. You can still do that, right? So I'm going to give you a tisk 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 right here because generally speaking and certainly best practice, you don't wanna export the results of a report into Excel and then manipulate them, right? Mistakes happen, reports need to be run last minute. So, you know, work those reports so they get you what you want rather than having to export them into Excel. Having said all that, you can still export the results of a report into Excel format it'll be saved outside the system. That is an Excel opening up within the system. It's exporting that report as an Excel file, okay? So if you use pivot reports, okay? There are some folks out there that, that know and love pivot reports and they are super handy. If you use them, um, that integration won't be there. Right, so let's take a little bit of a closer look at this pivot report screenshot. Okay, so I kept saying if it opens up in Razor's Edge, right, in Excel, then you won't be able to use that. And how you know something opens up in Razor's Edge is it will, the title of the Excel file will have BB and then a string of numbers. And that's the same in Word too. So if you're running something, whether that's uh, in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, it, in that you it opens up right in Razor's Edge and it has this weird BB number 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 that will go away. So this is a close up of a pivot report. This is what they look like. So you will have to export the pivot report, but remember those pivot reports work with queries. You can't have a pivot report in Razor's Edge without a query. So if you export it, you'll always 
need to be exporting the new data from the query to work with the pivot report. So my advice is two things. Export in that way, so get your pivot report out of the system for reference, future reference, right? Or take a screenshot of it and to, so you can kind of visually remind yourself what that report looks like so that when you recreate it somewhere else, whether that is in Excel or someplace new altogether, um, you'll be able to recreate that um, relatively easily. So if you are a pivot report lover and user, that process is going to change for you. Uh, media that live uh, on the media tab that are Microsoft Excel files, same as Microsoft Word and media, you won't be able to open them up in the media tab and you won't be able to save any, excuse me, any changes to them. So that is everything for the changes that I feel you'll feel in, in terms of Microsoft Excel. So Microsoft Word is gonna affect you the most, then Microsoft Excel, mainly if you use pivot reports. And then third, but certainly not least, uh, Microsoft Outlook, those integrations uh, from within uh, Razor's Edge 7.96 database view, good old fashioned Razor's Edge, um, those integrations will uh, be impacted as well. This is probably the, you, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say a lot of you aren't using Microsoft Outlook in a way that it was meant to integrate with um, a 7.96 database view. So uh, I don't expect a lot of you will be impacted by these Outlook changes, but if you are, this is what's gonna change. So creating actions from Microsoft Outlook emails. So there was a way, or there still is a way, that you can save emails um, that you send as actions into Razor's Edge. Something to note here, the parenthetical information after this first bullet point, the Blackboard for Outlook web view add-in is not changing, okay? So if you are an NXT customer and you are able currently to create an action and then you can, or I'm sorry, send an email and save that email as an action. None of that is changing. So if you went to the marketplace in NXT and you activated that add-in, the Blackboard for Outlook web view add-in, that's not changing, okay? But if you are creating actions from emails that you sent in Outlook, that is changing. Um, send as mail is changing. Uh, opening an email directly from a constituent record, uh, I'm gonna go through these relatively quickly. Sending emails via globally add action. So if you were globally adding an action, say you had a meet and greet and everybody gave you their email address. And so you pulled a query of everybody who attended and then you wanted to globally add an action to their record in administration in the Razor's Edge menu bar and globally add, and then you add an action. When you do that, you have an option to send uh, that action as an email or send, um, uh, send an email from that global ad, that's going away. Action notifications through Outlook, uh, scheduled actions. A queue notification recipient search by Outlook user, send as mail in on-demand queues, Outlook Anywhere features such as syncing Outlook contacts, appointments, and tasks with Razor's Edge records. Now, I know I went through the Microsoft Outlook changes, really quickly. And if you have any further questions, you can either access the resources that we'll cover later in this recap, um, or you can shoot me an email. But I don't suspect many of you will be impacted uh, much by the Outlook uh, integration changes. Okay, so now to the um, 10 point plan. So now to the, how will you manage these changes? Now, all of you are different, right? All of you have different workflows. All of you have different processes. They may look similar to the organization down the street, but they're unique to you. Um, so 
we're going to go through this 10 point plan, the steps in it, but change it as you see fit. This is a starting point. I think it's a pretty good starting point, but it is a starting point. So build it, grow it, take away, make, customize this plan for you and your team's specific needs. Okay. So the first point on the plan, self-explanatory, but always needs to be said. If you haven't read all the resources Blackboard has created, and they've created lots of resources via PDFs, screenshots, walkthroughs, uh, written walkthroughs as blog posts, uh, video walkthroughs, webinars. If you haven't read all of those resources that Blackboard has created, I'm not exaggerating, you need to read all of them. Make sure that you start reading them. Some light weekend reading, maybe. <laughs> Kidding. Um, and as you start reading those, what will happen is you'll start to see what's going to impact you the most. Uh, and then you can focus there, right? So consume those resources so that those resources don't consume you, okay? And decide where you need to give some focus on managing these changes. Number two, after you've consumed all of those resources so they don't start to consume you and stress you out, continue to visit those pages on the regular, okay? So if that's every few time, a few times every week, do that because those resources will be updated as um, new information comes out from Blackbaud or the person who produced the resource. So the resources that I'm referring to and that I find the most useful will be in the resource slide in this slide deck. And when you download that, those will be live clickable links. Number three, get what you need out of the system, right? So one of the options you have for uh, donor acknowledgement letters, just as one example, is to set up either a simple mail merge or a conditional mail merge outside of Razor's Edge with data you exported from Razor's Edge, okay? But if you don't have the letters to kind of cut and paste, right, that live in your mail file or in configuration letters, then you'll have to recreate them from scratch. As long as you can get those out of the system, save them, mark them, you'll be able to continue to use those letters outside of Razor's Edge in a Microsoft Word merge with data exported from Razor's Edge and through a, your, your good old uh, handy dandy Razor's Edge donor acknowledgement letter that you use every day. You'll still be able, able to export uh, from there you just won't be able to merge within Razor's Edge. Other things, as I just mentioned, that you'll want to get out of the system, pivot reports. If you do have letters in action, in action letters that you need to get out of the system because you're going to use those, or in constituent letters and configuration, make sure you get those out as well. And by the way, while we're talking about it, you might get into configuration letters and see that there are umpteen million, exaggerating, but I think you know what I'm saying. There's lots of letters in configuration letters, right? Now is a perfect opportunity. Y'all know me, I'm a silver lining kind of guy. So now's a great time to audit your letter, audit your letters period and your process for producing donor acknowledgement letters or any kind of letter. So take a little bit of extra time it to be a day-long meeting. Just decide which are old letters that are still in the system, which are maybe new letters that we don't use anymore or we thought we'd use, but we never did. Um, so take it, take, use this as an opportunity to audit that process and simplify where you can. Now, I understand a lot of you are working with directors and VPs and presidents. So I know that they have certain ways that letters, that they would like to see letters printed. Um, and you'll always want to accommodate those folks, but you can still simplify within that frame as well. So use it as an opportunity to simplify your letters and audit your entire letter process. Four and five go hand in hand. Get familiar with mail merge in Word. Really, 
really familiar because I suspect most of you, this is the direction you're going to go to produce your um, donor acknowledgements and other mail types going forward. Um, so get familiar with it if you aren't already. If you are, great. Um, that skill is going to come in really handy. You're going to be a superstar. Um, but if you aren't, become really familiar with word merges in Word. And then five, set up your word merges, whether they're simple word merges or conditional word merges. Get them set up now and test them over and over and over and over. And oh, by the way, did I say test them again and again and again? Yeah, you just don't want to get caught not knowing who's getting what letter and where did this go and what did I do with that? And it's, you know, February 27th and oh crap, I should have done this a long time ago, right? Those situations we've all been in before. So just make sure you get those set up um, and test them over and over and over. Now, I'll give a quick mention here while we're talking number four and number five, uh, in the shared folder, in the shared documents folder that you'll have access to, that I'll share a link with you, there is a walkthrough of a simple mail merge. And uh, guess what? It's really simple, <laughs> hence the name. Um, so you'll have that. I'm gonna add a conditional uh, mail merge document in there too. So if you wanna download either or both of these documents and cut and paste them into maybe your processes and procedures documentation that's ready to go, um, feel free to do that. Number six of our 10 point plan. Um, so use the word merges that you set up in step five as your first and maybe, just maybe, your only step going forward, okay? Like I said just a moment ago, for many of you, this word merge, using a Microsoft word merge, whether it's a simple mail merge or a conditional mail merge, will be your preferred way of moving forward. I suspect you will keep moving forward in that direction, okay? So the plan stops at six for you. Well, not really, but I think you know what I'm saying. You'll wanna take into consideration nine and 10, but you can skip over seven and eight, right? So if you say, you know what? I got my word merges set up outside of Razor's Edge. I'm using Razor's Edge data exported using my, um, my standby, my go-to, uh, donor acknowledgement letter file in our email. I got those set up. It's rocking. It's rolling. I'm good. We're just going to do that. That's okay. That's where you, that's, that's your new way of working. There's actually some benefits of working this way. And as a side note, back in the mid nineties to late nineties, this is how it was done right? You exported whatever data you wanted to include in a letter, whether it was donor acknowledgement letter or some other type of, of mail. You exported it from Razor's Edge altogether. The, the integration to Microsoft apps wasn't there. Um, so we're kind of going old school, if you will. Um, but one thing to mention with six, if you are going to go in this direction, You'll still want to make sure that after you print the letters or you have them to a place where they're almost ready to print, that you go back and mark those gifts as acknowledged so that the status for those gifts in terms of acknowledgement will change to acknowledged from not acknowledged. Now, it won't change the do not acknowledged, of course, but it will change the not acknowledged to acknowledged. So that's one step you'll still have to uh, perform in Razor's Edge along with. Can I say this enough? Exporting your data using that, your old standby donor acknowledgement letter file in our email. So you may stop at six, right? Great. If you, let's say you get your word merges all set up and like I said, you're rocking and you're rolling and then you feel really comfortable with that and you're saying, well, Ed said something in his 10 point plan, number seven and number eight, right? Kind of the fancy new way of doing things. Once you get number six under your belt and you feel confident 
and, and that process is running smoothly, then maybe, just maybe, consider number seven, which is uh, Microsoft Power Platform and specifically Power Automate, uh, which will um, works with RE NXT. So if you are not an NXT customer, this um, I don't think is an option for you because I don't believe that Power Platform works with database, easy for me to say, database view uh, alone. Um, but if you're using NXT and you want to use Microsoft Power Platform, Power Automate, uh, there are some free licenses available for nonprofit customers. And here's what that website looks like, everybody. Okay, so it's an eligibility form. So just go ahead and fill out your eligibility and uh, you'll hear back from Microsoft whether you are um, uh, eligible for free or discount. Um, and there's an eligibility video down there. So um, if you're interested after you get everything under control, after 228, and you want to take a look at Power Platform and Power Automate, um, see if you qualify for those free licenses. It, it, it doesn't just do letters. It can automate a lot of functions within WebView slash NXT. So if there's that thing, how do you like that for a technical term? That thing out there that you always wish you could automate, and maybe it's not yet available in the native workflow uh, functionality in WebView, it, it, you can probably create a, a um, automation in Power Platform uh, that, that can facilitate that automation for you. So it's not just for letters, it's for lots of, lots of things in uh, NXT. Um, number eight, again, after you get through 228, you're rocking and rolling with your new workflows, you may want to consider a third-party vendor. And the, the two biggies right now um, are from companies called RedArc, and uh, this is uh, another company, uh, Receder Pro. Um, these are links to that particular um, plugin in um, Mark in Blackbot Marketplace. Good heavens! Um, but here's what that looks like in uh, Blackbot Marketplace. Um, so again, these are apps. These are plugins that kind of help you. Um, work faster, work smarter instead of harder. Uh, so this is Receiver Pro by DonorTech. And then the other was RedArc. And their uh, uh, marketplace plugin is called Letterbox. And I actually just sat in on a webinar uh, recently um, about Letterbox, and it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty slick, is what I'm going to tell you. Um, I have no preference. I have no ties to either one of these companies. Um, I just sat in on the webinar recently, so that's why this one's on my mind. And I know Receder Pro has a webinar coming up um, soon as well. Um, but again, RedArc and Receder Pro, those are NXT specific, so they work inside of WebView. Um, and help you um, send one-off letters or bulk letters through NXT. So in a lot of ways, in terms of ease and in terms of a modern contemporary feel, RedArc and Receder Pro through DonorTech, those are going to be game changers, right? They're really going to shift the paradigm uh, in how we uh, produce letters from our BlackBot products. So pretty cool stuff coming down the pike, both from uh, DonorTech, who their product is already in Marketplace, and RedArc, uh, their product called Letterbox, will hit the Marketplace on February 28th. Um, if you are interested in RedArc, go ahead and hit Register Interest, and that will just you know signal to them that you're interested in knowing when it hits the Marketplace. Insider tip here. There's a free version. There's a free package from RedArc. I just found that out. So um, explore that. It, it's, it's, it's limited in terms of how many letters that you can produce per month, 
um, but it is a free version. So if you want to start out with that as a free version and then maybe go to the paid version through Red Arc, um, you know, that'd be great. But again, make sure you hit that number six first and then explore other options uh, from third-party vendors or from Microsoft. All righty, my mouse keeps messing up a little bit. Let me change that. All right, so here's the shared folder, y'all. So here's the checklist, the shared folder that you'll have access to, um, linked down in the description. Uh, here's the checklist for managing these changes. This is the creating a simple mail merge documentation I mentioned earlier. And then here's the slide deck. The slide deck you will have to download to get to those resources that are live links in my uh, presentation, but there they are. So you'll get that. You can look for that down below, or if you already have the slide deck, you can access it through uh, the slide deck as well. Number 10, not that y'all don't take data security seriously, but just think, think about number six there in the 10 point plan. You know, your word merges outside of Razor's Edge. Work with data you've exported from Razor's Edge. So for some of you, that may mean that you're exporting more data now than perhaps you ever have. So you'll want to talk with your IT friends, folks that, on your team. Um, talk with the committee that handles um, data security and protocols. Um, at the very, very least, make sure that any data you export going forward is saved to a secure folder, whether that is on your machine or on your network, in your shared folders. Um, save it in a secure fo uh, folder and then make a point to go through on a regular basis and just delete, get rid of those files out of that folder, okay? Data security is only gonna get um, more important as we move through, um, you know, as we go forward in time. So that is worth a mention here and that is step 10, to make sure that you talk to the folks responsible at your organization for data security to make sure that your new workflows meet all the protocols for data security. So this slide really is an, an um, because mail merge is going to be um, kind of the, the biggest impact you'll see with these changes to the way Razor's Edge and Microsoft Office applications integrate. This kind of has all of your options laid out on one screen. So your first option is what I fondly refer to as old new school, right? It's the way we did it way back in the day. Um, and again, that simple mail merge documentation is here in this uh, folder for you. Again, as a second, and these are kind of in priority order in the way that I feel most of you should approach them, um, is uh, uh, Power Automate Kits that BlackBot has put together for you. So if you're interested in, or when you're interested in Power Platform, go to this link. It's almost like a free training that's set up. It's gonna walk you through the process of using uh, Power Automate on the Power Platform platform. Um, so make use of that when you are ready, but don't rush it. We wanna have the bandwidth, not only to put these changes into place, but to sustain them. So if you jump straight, I don't wanna scare you from using uh, Microsoft Power Platform or Red Arc or DonorTech third-party vendor products, but just know that if you leave and nobody knows how to do it, then they'll have to reconfigure the whole process again. So that's again why I say start with Word and then later when you're feeling super confident, move to something like Power Platform or a third-party option. So resources, all right. So these are the resources I'd like to recommend you keep an eye on through 228 and probably after um, is keep an eye on, it. this first one is Bill Connors. I have the good fortune to 
call him not only a colleague, but a friend as well. He is not only an expert, amazing Razor's Edge consultant, um, he is the author of Fundraising with Razor's Edge, a non-technical approach. Um, but he also, for the sake of our conversation today, he wrote an article, which we'll take a look at, that lives on his webpage that details very specifically all the changes. So this is a lot of what you'll see uh, in the next resource that I'll show you, kind of the official Blackboard resource, but it has Bill's commentary. So it gives you some insight into kind of his thoughts on these changes, not just what they are, um, but a lot like this recap. Um, so this is a very deep dive into those changes. So check that out. Um, this is just a link to his book. That's what his book looks like. It's a great book. So if you haven't um, had a chance to look at that, um, take a look at his book. This is the Blackboard integration updates. So this is kind of what Bill used as a jumping off point for his in-depth uh, post on his website. But these are all drop downs, so you can kind of see what the changes are and, and what to expect from a Blackboard perspective. And then here are some upcoming customer success webinars. Like I said, consume the resources so they don't consume you. Look at some of these uh, resources uh, by way of customer success webinars. There was one uh, particularly good uh, webinar uh, that happened uh, seven, 10 days ago. Uh, so if you, here's what that looks like. So it's going to let me get into there. So hopefully it will let you watch this. Ah, the webinar has concluded. So if you get this screen, just um, uh, let me know, or you might get a registration form since I already took it. I already registered for it. So that's why, but you may see a, hey, you want to register? Just put your email in and you can watch this. So try that. But it's much, again, much of the same information just presented uh, from a different presenter in a little bit of a different tone. So that may speak to you. Uh, all righty. So here are some questions that were asked during the live uh, webinar during the Q&A portion um, of our time together on that day. Um, so I'm just going to go through these and give you my thoughts and uh, some answers. Um, so the first one, does this mean the things now on the media tab will no longer be available? Absolutely not. You'll still be able to access uh, files on the media tab. You won't be able to change them. You won't be able to add Word. Um, word type media types into the media tab, say that fast five times, um, but they'll still be there. Uh, if you are using NXT WebView, um, I recommend really starting to use what's called attachments. So the media tab in um, database view is called the attachments tile in WebView. So if you are an NXT customer and you have a lot of media in your media tab, um, start using attachments in WebView. Uh, the next question, will receipts emailed through Online Express be affected? This question was about email notification. So after me, as the donor, clicks the submit button on an Online Express form, the notification that I get from clicking that sub, uh, submit my donation button. Um, those will not be impacted at all. They'll still work, still use them. And that's the same for, obviously none of these changes impact uh, WebView slash NXT. So if you are, if you have form, donation forms or registration forms set up there, that's not impacted either. Will running reports through Q and export it out as a Word file be affected? So let me tell you what I know. Q, Q processes that are set up as word merges, meaning Q is doing the heavy lifting around bringing out the data and merging it into a word document, that will not work. This question I think is specifically around, uh, around running reports through Q and then exporting them as a word file. Now, based on what I said earlier about, you know, you can still save a report as a Word file, 
my instinct tells me that you will still be able to do that, but that is a question that I would reach out to BlackBot and ask specifically. Great question. Uh, number three, will we be able to add letters in the future if we need a different conditional letter in Razor's Edge? 100%, absolutely. So if you remember back a little bit earlier in the recap, I talked about you know, the first stop in setting up a new letter, adding a new letter to your mail files is adding it to configuration. So then you can use it in batches when you're entering GIFs or if you're entering GIFs directly onto a constituent record, um, you need that letter code so you know what letter they're supposed to get outside in your Microsoft Word merge. Um, so yes, you can still do that. And that's where you would do that in configuration. Um, is the media tab, this is question number four, is the media tab not going to work at all? We have PDF files on the media tab. Nope, the media tab is still going to work. You'll be, have access to all your PDFs. Again, if you are an NXT customer, I would recommend exploring uh, the attachment tile in NXT. Um, does this mean the data pool will be a CSV or other format being that Excel is no longer supported? So Excel within Razor's Edge is no longer uh, supported. However, you can export out an Excel file from um, Razor's Edge with no problem going forward. So for if you're using the exported data with a Microsoft Word merge, you'll wanna export that as a CSV as opposed to an Excel. There's just less formatting in a CSV file, so it's a cleaner file. Um, and you'll have fewer issues, potential issues with a CSV file than, uh, rather than an Excel file. But Excel is still supported in the sense that you can still export data as an Excel file and save that to your local machine or shared folder. Um, you just can't open up Excel within Razor's Edge. Uh, next question, we are not using the conditional mail option. We still use simple. Do you feel this would be a good time to implement conditional mail? So here's the thing. I think it's always a good idea to implement conditional mail. Now, if you have a super simple um, uh, fundraising cycle and you really only fundraise for just using this as an example, just if you know the annual fund, right? And everybody gets the same letter and that simple mail merge works fine for you. I mean, that's fine. But if you're fundraising for a capital campaign and annual campaign and special initiatives and, 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 and you can set up your conditional mail merges um, to work off of whatever letter, let's say, uh, or fund for that matter, that's your condition. So um, I would say, yes, explore that, but set up your simples first outside of Razor's Edge and then start experimenting with the conditional. I wouldn't recommend building a conditional mail merge in RE mail at this point, um, unless you're just super interested and you've never used it before and you wanna see how it works. Um, then explore that, but just know after February 28th, um, you won't be able to use it anymore. Uh, last question, when exporting out, um, it will still export into the Blackboard hosting file FTP. The answer is yes, you can still save files there, but you can also save them down to your machine. For me personally, that's just a little bit easier than having to access the hosted files. Um, and for those of you who may not know, uh, the BlackBot hosting file is, think of like a Dropbox that BlackBot hosts or OneDrive um, that you can store files. It's not unlimited storage. Um, there's a lot, but it's not unlimited. So if you're using that, you already know what it is. If you're not using it, I wouldn't be so concerned about it. Um, just keep doing things the way you've been doing them. All right. I'm going to stop sharing and come and talk to you. I'm going to review my notes, make sure I got everything. Um, but that was a slide deck. That's pretty much what we covered in our talk the other day in the live webinar. I'm just reviewing my notes to make sure I've covered everything for you. Um, I did have two polls during the live webinar, and 57% of the uh, attendees said that that was last Thursday was the first time that they had heard about the changes. So if you fall into that category, um, I'm trying to think of a way to sugarcoat it, but there's no way to do that. 
Um, if you wait any longer, you're going to be behind the eight ball here. So read those resources, start, you know, consuming that information, those resources, so that those resources don't consume you, stay up on it. If you have a plan, it's not too late to start a plan, but if, if, it's getting to that point though. We're right on the edge where you may um, you may have some issues that you otherwise wouldn't have had. Um, the other poll that I had was where do you feel this will impact you the most? And the, the a large majority of you said donor acknowledgement letters and, and I agree with uh, the results of that poll as well. Um, a couple other random notes about Microsoft Word. You know, I talked about the Microsoft Word Merge button that's going away from mail files. And if you have trained with me or I've worked with you, I describe that send to Word Merge button as the entrance to Middle Earth. So if you're a science fiction fan, specifically Lord of the Rings, there's this place that is not Earth and it's not not Earth, it's Middle Earth. <laughs> so send to Word Merge wizard takes you to this place in the middle of Razor's Edge and Word. So any, con, uh, any Word merges you build outside of Razor's Edge using data exported from Razor's Edge, you are rebuilding Middle Earth essentially. So that analogy may work for some of you. Um, I would recommend starting with, uh, in terms of the 10 point plan, start with one through four today, here today now, get started right after you watch this. Um, read the resources, right? Start a plan. Um, ba, 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 ba. Super important tip here. Setting up simple mail merges in Word are simple, super simple, easy to set up. The conditional mail merges, the chances of them taking longer than you think they're going to take you to set up, the chances are high. So make sure if you do want to do a conditional mail merge that you start on that now, ASAP. So, and again, it's, I said I would repeat this later on. It's worth mentioning as you're going through this, managing this change, that gift receiving in WebView, and that's not a third party vendor, that's built in. So if in, you're in WebView, or NXT, and you go to fundraising, and you go to gift receipting, that's where you can produce gift, you can produce receipts that really kind of, they're emails, um, but you could treat them as acknowledgements, right? So during pandemic lockdown, um, you know, as people were scrambling, this was a, a godsend really to a lot of the good folks that I work with, um, because they didn't have a printer at home or they couldn't get in the office to use the printer, you know, insert whatever the issue was here. So, you know, that is a viable option. So in NXD fundraising gift receiving, they're emails, but if you are, you know, you got your email game down and you have a lot of emails in the system for folks, that's a perfectly acceptable option. They work in conjunction with lists in WebView. So you can create um, a constituent list let's say, to work with those um, gift receipts. Um, reviewing my notes here. All right. So hopefully that brings us to the end of our recap. So um, first of all, um, thanks for watching. I hope that you found something um, useful, maybe something you didn't know before, informative. You found some resources that were just the thing you needed to make this change a little bit more manageable you know, here's the thing, you got this, you're, you're gonna do this. For some of you, you'll be able to stop at this number six in the 10 point plan. So perfect, great, you're done, you've managed the change, you can move on and not think about it. Just finesse the process after that. So, you know, but we are just a, a, a little bit over a month away from those changes taking effect. February 28th, 2022 is the big day uh, when those integrations will go away. So. I hope that this recap has helped you. Thanks again for those who attended live. Um, good luck with these changes. Like I said, you got this. I have 100% confidence that you're gonna be able to do this. So thanks for watching again and have a great day.
Thanks, y'all.